Welcome back to my home studio, everyone. It is day 27 in the coronavirus distraction videos that I've been making for my students and for anyone else who just wants a, a distraction from everything that's going on and you want to think about clay. So based on some requests, I am doing a video today on how I um, prepare slip for slip trailing. I do plain slip and then I also will add mason stains and I make some colored slip. So leave me any questions in the comments below and I hope you enjoy. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can. All right. So I've had a lot of people that have asked me, inquired about uh, doing a video on making slip. So I, I wanna show you that. Now this bucket right here, this is my throwing slip that I keep at my wheel. Um, a lot of times, if you have throwing slip, you can just kind of pour the water off after it sits for a few days and or leave the lid off, allow it to thicken up a little bit and you can have a nice uh, slip for slip trailing. Um, in lieu of that though, because I know a lot of people are not um, throwers, they might not have access to a wheel, you can make your own slip from bone dry clay. Now all of these pieces here, these are just bone dry uh, clay, the same clay body that I'm gonna be putting the slip on. Uh, don't be alarmed if you see some of these have red on it. These were from the one video that I did when I uh, made the lattice cut vase and I actually just have uh, paint. It was actually gouache. It's going to burn out in the kiln, so it the, it might make the pink looks, the slip look pink, but it won't be pink after it fires. So I'm going to put my bone dry clay into my container that I wanna make the slip in. Then I can add some water to pretty much cover it. I don't have to necessarily cover the entire thing because as it starts to break down, it's gonna settle down in there and it's gonna kind of fall down in there a little bit more. So you can see it's pretty much covering it. Now, I just wanna give this probably about uh, two or three hours, let it kind of break down, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I mix that up. So my dry clay that I covered with water has been sitting for a couple of hours and it has broken down. So it has really become slip. Um, in order to kind of finish this off and make it a usable slip, slip, I am going to have to mix it and I'm going to sieve it because some of the clay scraps that I had would have had grog in it and the grog could end up by clogging the tip of a slip trailer if I wanted to use a small tip. So I do like to sieve it. But the first thing that I wanna do is you can see I have a, a little bit of water on the top. I'm gonna to see what I can do to just pour off some of that water. I can always add extra if it's a little bit on the thick side. Now. You could just give it a really, really good shake, but you could also use, say, something like uh, an immersion blender. And this is a very inexpensive one that I picked up at Aldi one time when they have it. Um, if you catch it when they have those good, good deals, you can get something for really, really inexpensively. Although I probably wouldn't have to use the electric mixer, I could just stir it up, I am going to use it just to make sure that it's really smooth and even adding more water as necessary. Before I open up the mason stain, I needed to get out my respirator. So I'm going to wear this and I'll just voice over what I'm doing because the way that mason stains come, they come in a powdered form. So I have it in a bag here and I'm using, oh, upside down. I'm using a 6600 mason stain, which is black, okay? So, and you can see I order mine from Cornell. I'll put the, the link, it's definitely in my Google Doc, but I'll put the link in the video description if you're looking for um, a, a place where you could order from. Now, with my respirator on, I am using a tablespoon, and I put in about two and a half, maybe three tablespoons into that. 
I decided I needed to add a little bit more, so I'm adding another couple tablespoons. And as I'm mixing it, I'm adding a, just a little bit more water at a time because, of course, the dry powder of the mason stain requires a little bit more water. And I want to get it to be a nice flowy consistency, something that it will easily flow through a bulb syringe. Now that all of the powdered mason stain has been mixed in, and I know it can't be airborne, I'm taking off my respirator now. So obviously when I'm doing slip like this, I'm not making a huge amount. So I'm just using a very small sieve. This is a test sieve. Um, this is a Talsman sieve and this is a number 60. Um, I figured that the mesh is big enough that it'll collect any of the grog of the clay that might be um, problematic to the slip trailer. And uh, the Talisman sieves make the really large ones. Like I have uh, the Talisman rotary sieve, which is amazing for mixing up a whole bucket of glaze. But when I'm doing small little things, like small batches, I most of the time I just use the test sieves. Um, I have another video that um, I actually, I need to post on uh, Talisman sieves and how great they are. I think they're... I, I've always thought of them as like the the best quality sieves that are around. Um, they're the ones that I've known about ever since I was uh, first taking ceramics, you know, in college. Now, when you run the the slip through the sieve, you can either push it or you can use gravity. Sorry, I was shaking the camera there. I realize. So, just by patting my hand against the bottom, you can see that the level's going down. Or I can just take my, uh, you could take a rubber scraper, um, you could take the uh, rubber or the silicone rib. This is just one of the mud tools ribs. This is the red. I'm just using the flat end. You could use a, a paintbrush if you want. Um, you just don't want to use anything that's gonna damage the sieve's screen, which I'm not worried about that. Oh, the other reason that I'm sieving this that I didn't even mention is sometimes the, part the particulates of the, um, the mason stains, they don't get all the way mixed up. So that by running it through the sieve, it just helps to make sure that it's really incorporated in there. Whenever I'm going to be staining a clay body, I usually run it through the sieve too, just to make sure. Okay, after I ran the first batch through the sieve, I realized I had a lot of grog in there. So I decided to, I'm switching to the 40, the 40 grit um, sieve, and we're gonna see if that will be fine, um, which I think it'll still get out the largest grog. I think it was probably just collecting more than I really needed it to collect. Because um, some of that stuff was so fine, it didn't look like it would be an issue with the slip trailer. Of course this is going through the sieve much more quickly and uh, more easily in the, uh, the larger mesh. Now that I switched to the slightly smaller sieve it's going through much faster. And again I just want to make sure that the mason stain is incorporated and that I'm removing large particles um, which could pose a, a clogging problem. And I'm just running the last little bit through. It's getting messy at this point, of course. So left in the bottom of the 40 screen is still quite a bit of grit and grog. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm glad that I sieved out so I don't have that issue with the slip trailer. Check out some of my coming videos for how I utilize this prepared slip. And please subscribe if you'd like to See more videos on working with clay and stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can. Mm -hmm.